Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Swedish Startup Sessions, and I'm here with Robert Melberg, who's the co-founder and CEO of Videofy Me, and we're going to look at the new Videofy Me app. Uh, we're going to look at uh, revenue and advertising, and we're going to talk about how to get uh, capital from angel lists. So stay tuned. <laughs> This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, clear use a G. Please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa. Bet you be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all, you ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, claim use a G, please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa, bet you be thanking God. This is the Swedish Startup Sessions. Hi, welcome back to the Swedish Startup Sessions, and I'm here with Robert Melberg, who is the CEO and co founder of Videofy Me, a Swedish video service, but you're actually uh, available in most of the world. Yeah, we are very happy right now, excited about releasing the new apps mm -hmm. in App Store and uh, Google Play. But you're not a directly competitor to YouTube because you're, you're letting uh, the bloggers and, and the users monetize their content, right? It's true. I mean, the big elephant in the room, we always talk about YouTube. Yeah. And it will be possible to to syndicate your video inventory that you're creating our apps to YouTube later this summer. Mm -hmm. So we see them as one channel of many channels yeah. where you can put your videos. Okay. But so so if we explain the, the product to the viewers. Yeah, it's, it's about helping publishers and yeah. bloggers and musicians to create better video inventory that, than what they really do. Mm -hmm. So we have been looking a lot of, of, of how Instagram helped all photographers to make more good-looking photos. Yeah. And the problem with video is that it's much more complex. Yeah. So what we're doing now is that we help them to uh, use nice and fun filters, but mm -hmm. we also see how can we help them to package the videos a bit more. So it's more like a small video show. Mm -hmm. For example, you can have your logotype in the beginning. Yeah. You can add voiceover and you can add music. So mm -hmm. we're trying to help the publishers to do more beautiful things. And so when you have been creating it, then you share it to all your digital platforms and you share the revenues that mm -hmm. we can take in from the advertising market. Okay. That's the product. Yeah. And you just this week released a new iPhone app. Yeah. I mean, the video mobile culture is exploding right now. Of course, we are looking a lot about what they're doing in, uh, in social cam and video, these companies. And uh, it's very good that these companies are really running a lot of traction to the mobile video market mm -hmm. and about how this uh, a lot of people now make content why we have our special take in this business. So, so when you started, um, tell me a little about your background. Well, I've been working in communication and advertising for many years and but I, I, I didn't think it was so sort of fun because, uh, you know, I'm a creative person yeah. and I'm coming from a business background and in the, in the advertising industry you're not supposed to be creative then. And really? Yeah, <laughs> that's how it is if yeah. you're on the kind of party measure side of, of, yeah. the, of the business. So I yeah. felt like I want to start a, a new uh, video service where I can really uh, make a difference, you know. And I, yeah. I have also a, a background from political science and. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy media logics, mm -hmm. so I mean, I'm interested to see how can we, how is this media landscape, we now, <laughs> media landscape changing, and how can we make a, a product that really attracts a, a modern way of publishing? Yeah. Um, and how how did you f come up with with the um, video five? Ah, where the, the, the startup to start with? Well, I, I and Oscar, we are old friends, mm -hmm. and I said, come and join me and work with me, we can mm -hmm. do a lot of fun. And we started from a kind of, a, 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 we created uh, our own uh, small video shows in the beginning. Yeah. And then we had an interview with Peter Sunder, the yeah. founder of Pirate Bay. Yeah. And then we worked with a, a, a big blog in Holland, Torrent Freak. Mm -hmm. So we published our small show, uh, the interview, with him there, and we just smashed 
a yeah. hundred thousand views in an hour with like, oh, hi, this is, this is really cool. Maybe yeah. we can automate this process and make a kind of automatic service for hundreds of thousands of blogs. Mm-hmm. So that's how we came up with the idea. Um, and at what stage are you right now? Well, we are this kind of small indie mm-hmm. company that want to become kind of a global company. Mm-hmm. So we are trying to see how can we launch this in a very smart way so we can um, be established, mm-hmm. not just in Sweden, but mm-hmm. in, on an international mm-hmm. level. That's our challenge right now, yeah. this summer. Yeah. So how would you say that, that um, your business model is disruptive? Is it because of this monetization? Uh, feature because I mean there's a lot of video uh, startups right now both from I mean you have YouTube and Ustream and just the TV and so on the big platforms but also uh, the sort of Instagrams of video uh, I mean Mark Zuckerberg have been favoring video for instance and so on so what's special about Videofy Me would you, you would say? Well it's, it's the only thing mm-hmm. that we say okay hey we have a a media landscape all, with a lot of publishers yeah. that doesn't make enough money mm. because I mean the blog story has been totally undercapitalized the last five years yeah. and now we see more and more acceptance from the advertising market to, to choose bloggers mm. as channels to mm. reach the target groups mm. and we become one extra income uh, revenue yeah. stream for independent publishers mm. and that's what really differs and uh, if we compare to VD, I mean a real publisher can't tell a story for 15 seconds no. And we strongly believe that we can, in our system, create better video inventory because we are, um, yeah, we, we are reaching out to, to people who are usually telling a story mm-hmm. in text and pictures mm-hmm. and now in video. Mm-hmm. That's what's different. So, so um, how do you have any limitations? I mean, on on uh, length or anything like that? It's ten minutes. Ten but, you minutes. Know, yeah. <laughs> But 10 minutes is a long time, yeah. so we, uh, we believe in one, two, three minute videos. Mm. That's what we see in our mm. system right now. Mm. Uh, so you said that, that there's common integration with YouTube. Yes. Um, but, I mean, they have their own ads on, on uh, a lot of videos, so how do you solve that sort of clash between ad systems? Well, we won't make any bus- uh, money out of okay. YouTube. I yeah. mean, we see that we, 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 we must be the publisher's friend mm-hmm. and then we must I mean they, they won't upload a video file twice mm. so then they can use our service and they can upload to their account on yeah. YouTube as well okay and I think that's that's a modern way of doing yeah, this yeah 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 so um, I know that you have uh, are fairly well funded money wise you have at least a lot of strong strong backers and you're one of the few companies Swedish companies, I would say, who actually uh, brought in money from AngelList, uh, which I think to a large degree have revolutionized the VC and the, especially the angel business, the angel business. So, um, what was your experience from going to AngelList and looking for capital? Well, you are up there. Uh, uh, first to say, well, at what stage were you when you? We're looking for for investment from AngelList. Was that your first round, or did you have previous investment? It was the second round. Yeah. And we were about to launch the first international version. Okay. And then then people in Germany and the US post there, they say, okay, now it might be interesting for us, you know. Yeah. So I mean, the combination of AngelList and Skype mm-hmm. was the is the hit, you know, yeah. because. If they like the ID of the, co- of the company, they contact us and we start talking to them and, and mm-hmm. we are pitching the ID. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we never met Christopher Mitchell that yeah. invested money, but we had, yeah, we met him and we had five Skype meetings mm-hmm. uh, during five weeks that mm-hmm. he is wired with money, you know. And it's, so I never met him in person. Yeah. And I think that's cool because you can have such a good experience of people without seeing them today. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, from a Swedish perspective, it's very interesting because it's so much stronger angels mm. in Germany and the US. Yeah. They have more money and they are, they can make, I mean, serious investments. Yeah, perhaps so more prof- professional because they do more deals. What would you, yeah, what would so you say? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I haven't been, I haven't not so much, uh, experience from, from Angelus, but I mean, we are right now 
Bridge funding the company and we are on an annual list every day. Yeah. So maybe we can do it again. Yeah. Do you think we will see, because I mean one of the complaints in Swedish startup business is of course that um, there's a, a too few Swedish angel investors and it's hard to get money. Uh, do you think we will see more companies that are following your model of going there to find capital? I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it's so many good startups here in Sweden right now, and the and the investment market. I mean, it's so few alternatives here in mm -hmm. Sweden. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, Almi have their are doing their investments in most, most almost half of the startups in Sweden. Yeah. It feels yeah. like so. I mean, there are very good. This real estate is a good alternative yeah. to get started. But then I think Angelus is a very good next step. Mm. But, but you, you think that you would have more uh, would have had the same success for the angelist if if you had done this for the first round, or do you think that that kind of track record so that you can show a product and that you can show an show an active user base in Sweden, for instance, is is a, that's a must. Yeah, it's a must. Yeah. yeah. So I think we must use our small, nice little Swedish market yeah. as a test launch uh, yeah. market mm. and if it works and if you can show revenues then you have a story you can export mm. Mm. so um, yeah, it's just about um, doing a serious profile yeah. in angelist and talking about revenues how how much uh, would you say that the, for instance a blogger how many views do they need what kind of traffic do they need to make a you know a decent income on a video find me uh, partnership it's a good question. I mean, we have this uh, Fuki, this famous Swedish blogger. Yeah, I mean, she yeah. invoices us 30,000 sec in a month. Wow. And I mean, that's serious money for yeah. being 18 years old. Yeah, definitely. But, but uh, what we see is that we have to come up with a product where the money is one, is important, but it's yeah. even more important that we start building the personal brand of the bloggers. Yeah. yeah. So we can gain them more traffic by mm -hmm. using our service. So. The social layer we are releasing in the apps right now, where you can, of course, comment and you can like videos mm. so you get this social confirmation, mm. and that your your fans is your critics mm. that is stronger than money in yeah. itself. Yeah. But that depends. I mean, if you're a star blogger, then you can make a lot of money from mm. us and, and, and become and stay independent. Mm. So I think and are you good. just targeting uh, bloggers, or, or are you you thinking of, of approaching traditional? Um, publishers as well? Um, the problem with the traditional publishers is that it takes me six to nine months to have a deal with a company here in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'd rather go for something else. But what we see uh, what we see right now is that we are not talking about blogs on the website mm. and in the apps anymore, more like video creators or video publishers. Mm. So we are addressing like comedians mm. and uh, musicians mm. as to as a, as a next step about mm. what, what kind of content we want mm. because they have true fans and we think they can gain a better relation with their fans through our service. Mm. Uh, US sources are reporting that basically the death of TV because I mean uh, if you look at, at the popular TV shows in the US right now, all of them are, are on independent cable, there's nothing more or less in the big networks. Uh, and we see here in, in Sweden that when, when our big network TV channels start releasing some hit TV show, nobody basically views it because they already download it on Torrent Freak or Pirate Bay. Um, so, so, I mean, the question is who is going to pay for, for regular TV in the future when, when the advertisers leave because there's, there's not enough people. Do you think that... that your kind of content with comedians, with, with uh, bloggers, with fashion bloggers, musicians and so on, will in the future sort of take over perhaps what we have come to expect, the, the entertainment value of, of regular TV? Or has that re already happened in your mind? Well, TV is TV. It will not disappear. It's mm. just about new forms. But what I think is interesting is that I, as a consumer of video content mm. or TV content, I choose what I want. Mm. I want to see it when I when I like to. So yeah, I mean, if I can choose to see this blog video inventory, this music mm. artist, this comedian, and I can see everything in my feed and follow it, of course, that's a very natural way for me 
So when I'm sitting on the bus and have nothing to do, I can have, read The Guardian and see four video clips mm -hmm. that I like, you know. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's a more, much more personal way of, uh, of consuming uh, yeah, entertainment, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is entertaining for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is also so important because I don't know uh, if I like a 15 second video clip. I don't know if, if I'm entertained, you know. Is that fun? No. No. I want to see something fun. Yeah. I mean, is it a, is a top blogger that had a really cool story? I, I think it's fun. I want to yeah. see one more clip. Or is it a uh, behind the scenes uh, with a with a with a good rock and roll band? Maybe I want to see or what they're doing. You know. Mm. So everything is about entertainment, mm. and that's why we target people that we think can entertain an audience. Mm -hmm. Because then you can create an app with a lot of valuable yeah. inventory. Yeah. And that means that, we, that consumers will say, oh, wait, I, I'm, downloading the, I'm downloading the video for me app because there's a lot of good and cool stuff that I want to see. And how, how have uh, advertisers reacted to, to uh, what you're offering? Do they see a, a greater value than, say, uh, advertising on YouTube? Or uh, is, is there something else you bring to, to the advertisers? Well, it's always about... Uh, eyeballs mm -hmm. in in TV advertising, but for us it's more like uh, selling fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have people that are following someone yeah. because they really like them. And uh, but I can't say it, 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 it down to the point. It's about selling an audience, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we're also embracing the consumers now. So that they we are they are also that we know who they are, mm. so we can tell advertisers that, that we don't just think this kind of yeah. audience we know because we have the information. And perhaps you do a better matching between you know, the, the, a blogger and the audience and the advertiser than, for instance, a huge system like YouTube can do. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing right now, mm. because to be able to like and follow and, uh, co uh, and comment a video, you must be a member mm. in our service. So that means in the future we can target uh, audiences in a smaller way for the advertisers. Yeah, yeah. But it's also about responsibility to not be too commercial, mm. show too much uh, advertising, yeah. because then people will go into the app and say, hey, I don't want to look at, at, uh, at on, on a pre-roll of 15 seconds for every video clip. Yeah. I mean, so it's always a, a analysis about how can we do smart advertising solutions that are mm. acceptable for the audience. Mm -hmm. Do you think that in the startup world we talk too little about monetization? Well, it's a culture thing, you know. When we started the company, the revenue share model was a, it's a natural way and it's a true business model that, that works. Mm. But in, in, for example, Silicon Valley, it's not about doing this in the beginning. I mean, it's just about creating a big user base. Yeah. And I, I love this American way of doing business, <laughs> but I mean, it's not, a, I can't do it here. I have to show a case where we say, this is how we will grow this. Mm. But you think that, that perhaps we, we see a lot of American in investors coming to Europe and coming to Sweden right now because I mean the, the valuations are so high in Silicon Valley. But you think we have a, a, a edge there that we actually do have to think about revenue and, and uh, not just do a lot of sharing apps where you don't really know what the business model can ever be. Well, I think social, social monetization, mm -hmm. trendy word, mm -hmm. is sexy because mm -hmm. it's about taking, I mean, we are embracing, I mean, someone is doing content in video mm -hmm. and that takes an effort mm -hmm. and we are ready to share it from day one. But, um, it's, uh, so it's built in the system and the, in the DNA of this company. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, it's tough to start with that model. So now it's, uh, we can also say we don't wanna, we don't want to push a lot of advertisers, mm. if you put uh, a video from our system on your Facebook. Mm. So now as a publisher you can choose to just turn off advertising. Yeah. So we must be, have a kind of a, uh, a system that is flexible, flexible yeah. for the publisher. Yeah. So what, what are your greatest challenges right now as a company? It's to create a world-class app mm. that the bloggers love. Mm. That's what it's about. Yeah. I mean, if if if, the, if our users say this is the best blog, this is the best apps, mm. this is everything I need, mm. then we will be very successful. Mm. So it's about doing world class a world class product. I listened to a podcast with Jason Calacanis yesterday, and he said that there is no more room for good things because they need to be excellent to survive. 
Do you that's, agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about. I mean, if we can have an excellent product that people love, mm. then we can put the smart marketing, advertising concepts mm. on top of this. But you can never... I mean, the product is number one, two and three right, right now. What's your, your uh, long-term goal? World domination or...? Well, it's about having a, uh, an app with uh, hundreds of thousands of video mm. clips that are really cool and interesting. Mm. So we can target people that have a small story that mm. they want to share with us. Mm. That's, what, that's, what we really are doing, that's what we're doing right now. And how, how is the, the international rollout going? It's just started, you know. Yeah. It's, we, are, we are doing a, a concept together with a, a media company here in Stockholm mm. about that we are challenging the fashionistas, uh, the, fashion, the fashion bloggers mm. on, a, on a global level. So we will launch this in the beginning of July. Mm. So it's about this <laughs> classical things like challenging people, yeah. making competitions mm. about video clips mm. to see if we can uh, get traction. Great. So what, what is the most important lesson that you personally have learned during this, these years running Video Find Me? Well, um, it's about speed mm -hmm. and it's about getting um, uh, building a culture in a company where you really have a, uh, a great superstar product team. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And also now lesson two is that we must be better on creating a story, mm. a visionary story that about, people, the company. about the company yeah. that people really can say, oh, wow, this is going to be hot. Yeah. So uh, I think we are better on that on now, <laughs> right now, and I hope we can uh, fulfill what we say right yeah. now. Do you have any advice that you would like to share to other startup founders and entrepreneurs? It's about being, before you start, being really sure about putting all the hard questions on the product yourself mm. because they are coming later mm. and also look at the DNA of the team from day one. Mm. Do, do we have everything we need in this team, all mm. skills we need to make a first version mm. in the team, mm. in the founding team? Mm. I think that's, a very, yeah. that's something I uh, can recommend to mm. do. So I think that's all for today, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.